A lot of the pathology we're going to see in heme is going to be due to the abnormal proliferation of cells, the cells we just talked about in the last video. In this video, we're going to talk about the abnormal proliferation of macrophages and plasma cells. We'll start with macrophages. Another name for macrophages, you know, you know, they're called monocytes, but when they enter the tissue, they, they get a new name. They're called macrophages. Another name is called histiocytes. So histiocytes. And histiocytes are further named for whatever tissue they reside in. So if they reside in the liver, we call those, we call those Kupfer cells. If they reside in the brain, we call those mic microglial cells, et cetera, et cetera. If they reside in the skin or the mucosa, we call those Langerhans cells. But you should just know that they're just different names for the same thing, tissue macrophages. And today we're gonna to talk about the proliferation of the Langerhans cells. So we'll call that Langerhans cell histiocytosis what a fitting name and longer on cells histiocytosis is that yeah, it's just an abnormal proliferation and you know those cells are longer on cells because these cells have something called berbic granules very characteristic they look like tennis rackets Side note, they're not actually granules, they're actually organelles, the functions I know, but um, when they first were discovered, they look like granules, so they just call them burpic granules, but they're actually organelles. They, these cells are also CD1A positive and S100 positive. What do you know about S100 positive cells? Those are cells that are from neural crest origin, like melanocytes, but there are other numerous cells that are S100 positive besides neural crest cells and Langerhans cells happens to be one of them. How do you make the diagnosis? What do people with Langerhans cell histiocytosis present with? Because Langerhans cells come from your bone marrow and go into your blood and finally into your tissue, you're gonna have problems with the first portion and the last portion of that. So you're gonna have bone marrow problems. And you're gonna have tissue problems. So bone marrow problems are gonna have bone marrow failure. Your bone is also gonna start getting destroyed by these cells. You're gonna have these cystic lesions on x-ray. Tissue problems are gonna have scalp and tissue eruptions. You can see in my notes some pictures there. They're quite gruesome, but these combined make longer Hans cell histiocytosis, and then they'll probably ask you something about burbic granules or, you know, what are they positive for, CD1A and S100 positive. That is the abnormal proliferation of your histiocytes. The next thing, the next topic is gonna to be on proliferation of plasma cells. What are plasma cells again? Those are just B cells that produce aminoglobulin, so Ig whatever. And if they're uncontrolled, then we're in trouble. And one of the easiest ways to detect for uncontrolled B cell, plasma cell proliferation is gonna be looking for these aminoglobulins. We do that with serum protein electrophoresis. We look for those aminoglobulins in our serum. And electrophoresis just means we separate those proteins. So just a quick rundown of your serum is what contains your proteins. The most abundant protein in your serum, do you know what that is? That'll be your albumin. There are other proteins like your globulins and then smaller, more minute proteins and you're gonna have your aminoglobulins, of course. That's what we're talking about today. And by doing electrophoresis, you can separate them and see how much protein is in there. You might see a graph that looks like this. You have albumin, alpha one, alpha two, beta, one beta two and gamma. What the heck does that mean? Well, they, they'll separate all these proteins and then you're gonna see spikes. So how much protein is in there? Albumin being the most abundant, you're gonna see this huge spike for albumin. Now alpha one, alpha two, beta, these are just uh, areas of minor proteins. So alpha one would include things like alpha one antitryptin, that's where it gets its alpha one from. Um, beta, things like transferrin, that's the protein that moves iron around. So you might see these little rises around the area, but nowhere near albumin. Yeah, albumin is the most abundant. And then gamma is gonna be your immunoglobulins. Yeah, and just a, just a disclaimer, immunoglobulins can show up in alpha and betas also, but 
we know it to show up in gamma. All right. So let's go back to what we were talking about. If you have plasma cells that are abnormally proliferating, you're gonna have increased immunoglobulins. So you're gonna have this giant spike in gamma. Again, that's where your immunoglobulins reside when you're doing electrophoresis. We call this giant spike a monoclonal spike. Monoclonal meaning they just stem from one cell that's gone haywire and producing way more than it should. So that's a monoclonal spike. We sometimes just shorthand it and call it an M spike. And that is a spike in your gamma region. If you see something that looks like this, they're getting at plasma cell disorders. Another thing you can see, remember your immunoglobulins are made up of light chains and heavy chains. If they're normal, you'll make an equal amount of heavy chains, an equal amount of light chains. If you have a monoclonal proliferation on the other hand, again, that's one cell going crazy, proliferating more than it has, then you can throw off that balance. You can produce a little more chains, light chains or heavy chains than usual. We are usually seen as increased light chains, so increased light chains. And we call that Benz Jones protein. I was shorthand it to BJP. And you can find BJP in your blood because you're having so much of it. You can find it in your urine because it's so much you actually spill it out in your urine. So BJP is an important marker, again, for plasma cell proliferation. Plasma cells abnormally proliferating. That's the name of the game. Now let's talk about some specific disorders within the category of plasma cell malproliferation. The biggest one is multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is somewhat common, is more seen in older patients, but multiple myeloma is quite serious. Causes are unknown, but some, some have linked it to increased IL-6, interleukin-6, that's the IL that stimulates B cells, so it makes sense that because there's increased IL-6, it increased B cells, increased plasma cells, etc. But whatever the case may be, you produce more immunoglobulins. In this case, you're going to produce a lot of IgG. You're also going to produce a lot of interleukin-1. These cells, these abnormal plasma cells, are going to produce a lot of interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 is noted to cause things like fever, but one of the historical names of interleukin-1 is actually osteoclast activating factor. That's very important. What do you think osteoclast activating factor does? It activates osteoclast. So in multiple myeloma, you're going to see that increased IgG. You're also going to see, because you have increased IL-1, cystic bone lesions. Multiple myeloma comes in with very vague symptoms that span different organ systems. So if you have a long question that you know have di has different symptoms from different organ systems, always have multiple myeloma on the back of your mind, okay? Always have it as a differential. Some of these symptoms, we just use a memory aid to remember it as crab. So the C in crab is gonna be calcium due to these cystic bone lesions, increased IL-1. So you're gonna have hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia causes a lot of problems, causes bone pain, causes uh, renal problems, causes uh, constipation also causes neuro signs like confusion. So I'll say neuro signs. The R is going to be renal and something called Rillo formation. I'll talk about what Rillo formation is in a second, but we'll just focus on renal for now. Renal is renal failure either from the increased calcium, calcium binding and basically destroying your tubules, so calcium, or from the Bench Jones proteins, which are directly cytotoxic and they can deposit and actually become amyloid. Amyloid is never good. So amyloid, uh, remind me what stains amyloid? That'd be your Congo red. Yeah, if you got that right, then good job. So it can deposit as amyloid. So amyloid, Benz Jones protein, you match that with calcium. This is destruction for your renal tubules. 
you're gonna see signs of renal failure like increased creatinine that's a that's just a blatant sign of renal damage so increased creatinine decreased GFR proteinuria and all that stuff that's renal failure the A is another double whammy so you have anemia because the bone marrow is basically being destroyed by these proliferation of your plasma cells however important to note when you're usually thinking about anemia you're thinking of less red blood cells so blood being uh, less viscous however in this case because you're making a lot of proteins and immunoglobulins blood is actually more viscous yeah you have anemia because you have decreased red blood cells but the blood itself is more viscous a also stands for amyloidosis i already explained why you get amyloidosis from the menstrual protein and then lastly b b is for bone lesions so cystic bone lesions again talked about why that was il1 now those are your uh, physical findings so your neuro symptoms you might have uh, signs of anemia you might have bone pain or back pain or rib pain etc etc so if you have a suspicion of multiple myeloma from that you can order some labs investigations what do you expect to find on labs talked about the m spike you can look for bench jones protein in the urine that might be your safest bet just collect a 24-hour urine look for that protein if you're really suspicious you can do a bone marrow biopsy bone marrow biopsy and it'll show more than 10% of cells being clonal proliferation. So basically cells that have gone haywire. So clonal cells. And then you'll see real low formation of red blood cells. What the heck is that? That's when your red blood cells stack together like coins. Real low just means like stacking of coins, which is a fitting name because it looks like this. Why does that is because all the proteins message with the charges of your RBC and they come together. So real low. Formation, you combine all these and it makes a great step question. Yeah, so again, anytime you have a lot of information, try and synthesize it all into a step-like question. So pause the video and then try and synthesize all this into a step-like question. So I've seen uh, questions where they just talk about some physical symptoms, so bone pain, um, confusion, constipation. They'll give you labs and you're looking for increased creatinine you're looking for hypercalcemia and then they might ask what additional findings might you see on investigation m spike or a spike in gamma region they might just not say m spike or Benz Jones in your urine or Rolo formation etc or they might show you a picture of Rolo formation and then make you work backwards and ask you you know was the patient predisposed to uh, renal failure due to amyloidosis etc 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 so there's many ways they can ask this kind of take some time kind of mess with it a little mix some of the variables around and if you can work frontwards and backwards with multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma and all the symptoms and findings you should be good there's another plasma cell disorder that i want to talk about and it's called wallenstrom wallenstrom macro globulinemia And this is actually a lymphoma. I'm just sneaking it in here because it looks a lot like multiple myeloma. So you're gonna have a plasma cell proliferation and you're gonna have increased immunoglobulins. However, it's not IgG in this case. Take a guess what it might be. Always look at the name if you're unsure. Macroglobulin, what's the biggest immunoglobulin? If you said IgM, you'd be correct. That's the pentamere, correct? What separates this from multiple myeloma is the IgM and the fact that it's a lymphoma. So you're gonna have lymphadenopathy. You're still gonna have that, that M spike because the M spike isn't uh, specific to IgG, it's just any immunoglobulins. So you're still gonna have the M spike. What you're not gonna have is the crab symptoms. So no crab symptoms. Instead, that, those crab symptoms are going to be replaced by symptoms of hyperviscous blood. 
Why? Because IgM is a pentamer. It's huge. If you're making a ton of it, then your blood is just full of these IgM pentamers and it becomes hyperviscous. So you're going to have increased risk of stroke, MI, any, any type of thrombotic events because of the hyperviscous blood. You're going to have retinal hemorrhage. You're going to have uh, increased bleeding, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but uh, the increased protein stops platelets from clumping. So one of the classic signs is continuous bleeding from your nose or your gums. So let's write bleeding. Retinal hemorrhage. And how do you treat it? You're going to want to do plasma phoresis to kind of symptomatically treat it. Um, take out that IgM. Last but not least, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. So just by the name, it's basically you have this proliferation of plasma cells, but because you're not showing symptoms, because you're not showing the classical signs of the two we just talked about, we just say is undetermined significance. So it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Once you rolled out Wallen's scrum and multiple myeloma, it's asymptomatic. You just happen to find proliferation of their plasma cells. However, it's under 10%, so it doesn't fall into the definition of multiple myeloma. And what do you do because it's asymptomatic? Do you just forget about it? No, you closely monitor it because this can, this number can grow and it can become multiple myeloma or Wallenstrom. So you're going to want to closely monitor. That does it for the plasma cell disorder. That does it for histiocytosis. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.